Gladys María. Gladys María Vieras Rojas. ¡Gladys María! Gladys with a Y. I'm 24 and I live in Miami. Miami. I'm 24 and I live in Miami. A lot, a lot, a lot. I like driving a lot. When I was 12, I came here. I didn't know what I was going to hear. But then I started learning a different language. And I liked it. I'm Gladys Vieira now with a Y. Because I became a U is it is and now. So now nobody will write my name wrong. Because I'm Gladys Vieira with a Y. Because I'm Gladys Vieira and I'm an M. Yeah. So many things I could tell you. When my mom told me we were when my mom crossed the border, told me I was that we were gonna 12. cross the border. She told going me on March. I was 12, going on 13. And we left in April. She told me in March, and we left in a white car with a, like a pickup truck, and we left from Yucatan. I was mad. I was mad. I was really mad. I was no longer gonna be the only child. I was gonna be sharing life with a stranger and my mom. I'm five years old. I'm at the beach. I go find my dad and I get lost. I needed to go look for him. Two hours, maybe three, and see, and see, and palms, and, and palms, people, and people. I was looking for him, looking for him, but no dad. So I went to go find help. I told the help, I'm lost, I need to find my dad. In the corner there was a cop getting a call from another cop that they were looking for me and I got found. And I'll go back home. I'm six years old and I'm going to ballet. And I'm going to a film. I don't know I'm going to film. And I'm doing ballet in front of a camera and I'm scared. I'm scared. I did a film with Fernando Perez, interpreting my aunt as a ballerina child. Back then I didn't understand what was going on. I did everything they wanted me to do with my mom right there. I did everything she wanted me to do. In Google, I'm known as actress from La Vida de Silva. Life is to Whistle, from Fernando Perez, 1998. Ladies with a Y, they wrote. I'm six years old, it's the weekend and I'm going with my dad. Going with my dad, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I'm six years old and I didn't want to be in the middle of Havana. I wanted to be with my friends in Vedado. It wasn't fun being without my mom, but it was fun going to her room and feeling she was there. It was fun playing drums with my uncle Pablo. It was, it was fun. But Friday, Saturday, Sunday wasn't... I missed more. I wanted more. I'm seven years old and I'm going out with my dad. To the beach and we stay a whole weekend at the beach I go to the beach with my friends and we thought we could swim <laughs> and we go and we go and it's four of us going and going and, and we touch rock slippery rock and we couldn't hold on and we couldn't hold on and we were holding on to everybody I swallowed water and I couldn't breathe and then all I saw was sky looking up and that's all I remember I went back home, my dad saw my grandma, everything was normal, and that was that. I'm seven years old and I'm very scared of the beach. I'm afraid. I'm seven years old and I'm alive. I'm eight years old. And my dad is gonna get married. And that's okay. I get to the place with a lot of gardens and little girls and a very strict teacher. But I have fun, and I always wanted to go back, always, with Nanny, Gladys. Sometimes I wanted my mom there, but she wasn't, and it was okay, because she was getting a life ready for us. 
And Gladys was fun. She was funny. I never really counted the time. I was without her, and then I was with her. ¿Con quién vivía en Havana? With my grandma. My grandma is fun. And I was mostly playing downstairs with my friends. And then I would be called, Gladys! La comida! And then I would go to immigration with my grandma a lot of times. And I already knew. ¿Qué edad tenía? I'm eight years old and I'm leaving Cuba. In 2001, I got on a plane, said goodbye to my dad, said goodbye to my uncle, said goodbye to my grandma, said goodbye to my grandpa, said goodbye to my pregnant stepmom, my dad's wife, and I left. And I never looked back. And I was so happy I was by myself on that plane because I got M&Ms and I got Coca-Cola and I was on the first row, somebody paying attention to me all the time, but I had the window seat. A lot of butterflies in my stomach. <laughs> I laughed and I took off and I left and never went back. For 10 years, I never went back. I'm eight years old and I'm in Merida, Yucatan. November 18th, 2001. And we see Paseo de Montejo and it's amazing. And I'm so happy I'm with my mom. I'm so happy I'm with my mom. That's it, we were together. We are together. I had peace. I had peace. And I shared a room with my mom. She had her bed, I had my bed. She had everything for me already. She had princess things. She had my clothes. She had toys. She had my life. And I didn't miss Cuba. I'm nine years old and I become a little woman. And I think I pulled my pants. My aunt gives me something that says congratulations. Little congratulations. Bear. Eres señorita. Turn the little woman. What is going on? I'm nine years old. What is going on? Why do I have to wear pamper again? <gasps> what is that? <gasps> I don't know. I'm 10 years old. And my mom asks me, do you want to be in ballet or do you want to swim? I want to swim. I want to swim. I want to be fit. I want to be like my mom. I want to have her body. I want to be tall and, and skinny and I want to... I want to swim. I want to be with her and her job. So I swim. Swim pretty good. And I try to imitate her how she swims. I look how she swims. I, I, I look at how she looks underwater. I notice, I observe him, and I learn in less than three months. I'm 11 years old, and I'm swimming for a team in Mexico. Los Talentos de Merida. It was about 10 of us from all over Merida, all the clubs of swimming, all the good ones in each style, and I'm one of them. I liked it. I liked feeling that I was recognized and that I was casted for a team of other teams. And I learned a lot. And my mom meets the father of my brothers. Because of the pool, because of swimming, he came from Miami. So they meet and I observe. I'm 12 years old. I'm at a Burger King. I'm in Burger King and my, my mom, mom tells, tells me, me I'm pregnant. Estoy embarazada. You're gonna have a brother. And I think of this guy with him. And my mom. Shh. I'm gonna have this baby because you can't be by yourself your whole life. You're gonna have a brother because my brothers and my sisters is the best thing that ever happened to me. So I don't care what you want. You're gonna have a brother. Because you need somebody to take care of me after. Ladies, up in the chair. Okay, have a seat, please. Let's get started. Guys, there's one thing that I really don't like as actors. I don't like self-effacing nonsense. I can't stand that. Now, I love the way you act. You're very talented. But when I ask you guys to do something, do it. Get in the habit of doing things. On set, a director's not going to ask you twice. What is your intentions? Because what, I talked to this young man earlier about it. 
It's not just anger. There's a relationship here. What is your intention? What is your wants? What do you want from your mother in this scene? When I was in an army jail in Cuba rotting my ass off, not once, I had to come out into the fucking streets to find my mother and my sister are gone from my house. They left the country, not one word, one letter, that's right, where were you? You love your mom? That she doesn't believe me. And I want her to believe me, I want her to see she doesn't. What do you want from her? Acceptance. To punish. Say that. To punish. To punish. Because that is your intention. I'm going to punish you. I blame you for having me. Now, I'm a thug. I'm a monster. I'm an animal. It's your fault, Mom. Maybe you hate yourself, and I'm going to punish you for bringing me into this earth. Dead to me. I hate, I hate you. Action. I follow her in the taxi. She goes into this fancy house in the coconut grove. Lunch. You. You gave her that money. Don't you see what you do to her? I never gave Don't her that money. Don't you? One time, one thousand dollars you gave her! Mama, was there a guy there? She's like you. She don't listen to me anymore. She told me, shut up, mind your own business, exactly like you do to me. Why do you have to hurt everything you touch? No. You why? Want, you want to know why she left, Mama? Not because of me, but because of you. Me? With all your nagging and your bitching. By nagging and bitching? Because I demand a little bit of respect. And, and you did the same house. thing? That's why I'm nagging and bitching. And you did the same thing to me when I wasn't this, I wasn't that. I was never good enough for you, Mama. I wanted nothing from you. You gave me heartache and humiliation. That's right, that's right. What did you expect? What do you expect now? To be loved? You ain't got no love in you, Mama. What do you think Poppy left for? And Gina? At least I didn't walk around my fucking head between my legs all my fucking life like you did, like Poppy did. You know, I made something out of myself, and I'm proud of it. I'm somebody, Mama. I'm somebody. You're nothing. You're an animal. God help me. What did I do to you? You were such a beautiful baby. I used to watch you sleep so beautiful. When, how did you become just such a little monster? His child? He's from the United States. Is he gonna stay here? Are we gonna go? Of him? Really? Calla de la boca. Shut up. I was saying goodbye to everything. I was saying goodbye to the boy that I had just kissed for the first time. I was getting cards from my friends saying they will miss me. I didn't see the bigger picture. I was stupid. Then my mom, of course, screamed at me. I had no right to be mad. This is what's going on, and I needed to accept it. And I was already 12, I was grown enough to know that we had to go. She couldn't stay in Mexico. We couldn't stay in Mexico, it wasn't the plan. Now I see. So we left. She left her paintings. She left her house. She left everything she had worked for for the past five years. She left. And we started driving for a week and a half. Sometimes we stopped, sometimes we didn't. Sometimes we said we were gonna go back. Sometimes we fought. It was an adventure. A long one. I try to forget it. And my trip was being in a car for seven days. I remember seeing a lot of trees, hotels. We stopped. I was sleeping most of the time. I would wake up to eat and go back to sleep. Until we got to a place where we needed to get off, my mom and I. We got off with our bags one bag each and he left because he's American it, it was a bridge we went through the bridge and my mom says you're not gonna say anything I'm gonna speak and you're not gonna say anything and I didn't want to say anything my mom said hi we're Cuban and we're here to stay taken inside 
and they asked for our information, my mom's information first, then my information. Four hours later, we were in a bus on the way to a house. And it was a house full of kids with moms. We were there for a week to prove we were Cubans. I was scared because I saw so many officers, United States officers, speaking English and I didn't know what they were saying. And my mom had learned the anthem of Cuba and, and we had to prove we were Cuban and how if my mom didn't speak like a Cuban. <laughs> How was she going to prove it if she didn't speak like it? I was confused, I was scared. But with my mom everything is okay. I play outside and I have little friends. We're not suffering, we have food. And we can go around and walk and go to the park. And we had it easy because we had families. Just because my mom was pregnant, she was able to stay with me. For the first time, I was happy she was pregnant. We went in the bus, we went back to immigration, and we got in the car and we left. And we kept driving, but now we were in the United States. It wasn't peaceful anymore. My mom didn't have peace. And you could see it, I could feel it. I could feel that she was gonna. What, what was she gonna do when she gets to Miami? Who was she gonna be? What was she gonna do? All she knew was swimming lessons, and that's it. That's all she did. And she was pregnant in a country where she didn't speak the language. And I was worried. It was just her and I, and now my little brother. I wasn't in peace. I love the sound of the cars. waves oh say can you see we're supposed to feel something like I gave up being Cuban like I gave up being from where I came from but I feel I feel that I'm not from there nor here not from there not from here I'm from the world and this paper says that I'm, I'm from, from the United States and I gave an oath that I entirely and absolutely renounce all allegiance and fidelity to any foreign place. I see a lot of law, 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 law. I'm just part of a new law, another law. I'm a United States citizen. I can have a passport and buy my ticket and travel by myself. Window seat, getting away, finding peace. I have so many reasons to be happy. I have two beautiful, handsome little brothers that take care of me and my mom and our happiness. I'm a U.S. citizen. I'm a U.S. citizen. After 12 years, I'm a U.S. citizen. And there's no room for failure. My mom did the effort of coming into this country and leaving everything, her comfort, her everything, so, so I can have the right to speak and communicate in the United States, so I can pursue anything that I wanted, so I can create, so I can be. She didn't bring me into the States, into, into this country for me to make an infraction and get kicked out. I'm so thankful for everything that happens. I'm so thankful that I was born in Cuba. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful that my mom was born in Cuba. So thankful that she left and she brought me out and I learned how to live in Mexico and I loved it. I'm so thankful that she got pregnant by whoever. And she came over here and she chose Miami. She gave me English. I used to imagine myself speaking English. And I'm so thankful. My American dream is to be in the big screen and learning. My American dream is to be in front of a camera and interpret people, interpret feelings, interpret situations because I'm part of it and because I'm American so that I can be in peace, freedom. To have my bills paid and my mom's bills paid, that's peace for me in this country. This country is, it's 
money what gives you peace peace is superficial here peace is money here and it's sad that I don't know how to get it and that I know that it's coming and it's not just because ambitious it's not because I'm I want money because of greed it's it's because I want my brothers to go to the university and I want my brothers to not have to see my mom go through anything to get money I want, I want my brothers to succeed and live their American dream that I will support and defend the Constitution and the laws of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation on purpose of evasion. So help me God. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which stands one nation under God with liberty and justice for all. For all. For all. Y que todo tesoro de él es que para mí No pudimos Al arroyo de la paz Nadie te regaña, nadie, nadie Mira, 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 mira Sigo ley de mi sueño Si no ya es la queja de mi voz Si boné y si no vienes Me moriré de amor Si te importas de mi canal I can't leave, nothing can happen Porque tú eres el dueño de mi amor si voy 